Assalamualaikum dan selamat sejahtera Bersama saya, Muhammad Aiman Di dalam segmen Kembara Nusantara Tamadun Melayu merupakan sebuah tamadun Yang kian mengejar pemudinan selepas kedatangan Islam Untuk pengantuan lebih lanjut Kita ke laporan bersama saudara Umar Hafiz Di International Institute of Islamic Civilization and Malay World Atau dikenali sebagai ISTAP Di Bukit Tunggu, Jalan Duta International Institute for Islamic Civilization and Malay World atau lebih dikenali sebagai ISTA diasaskan pada 1989 Masihi di lokasi asalnya yang terletak di Damansara, Kuala Lumpur Penubuhan institut ini dipelopori oleh Profesor Emeritus Syed Muhammad Nawqib Al-Atas yang di mana objektif utamanya adalah untuk melahirkan sarjana serba boleh dalam bidang tamadun dan pemikiran Islam Sebagaimana kita melihat pada hari ini Seni bina ista ini adalah berasaskan gabungan antara seni bina Andalusia dan juga istana Alhamdulillah yang tertak di Sepanyol serta bercirikan tamadun Melayu okay. Assalamualaikum, salam sejahtera dan salam satu Malaysia Nama saya Anis Enza dan ini Nur Sabrina dan hari ini kita berada di International Institution of Islamic Civilization and Malay World dan sekarang saya bersama Puan Nur Hashima iaitu uh, pustakawan di institut ini dan kita akan menjalankan sedikit um, temu bual bersama Puan Hashima. Jadi Puan Hashima, uh, soalan pertama saya, bolehkah Puan Hashima terangkan sedikit sebanyak tentang istek ini? Okey, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh eh. Okey, okey. Okay. Tak sekali dekat juga tu. Okey, uh, penubuhan apa ni istek kita bermula daripada tak silap saya 1989. Uh, and then uh, <coughs> apa ni uh, orang yang bertanggungjawab dari segi penubuhan tu ialah Prof uh, Perisat Nakib Muhammad Nakib Al Atas, and then beliau banyak menyumbang dari segi proses pembinaan bangunan sampai kepada galaksi lah. Jadi kita actually step ni perpindahan dia dah beberapa kali dah sebenarnya asal babang asal ni ialah di Damansara, and then pemindahan yang baru ke bangunan ni terasa tahun 2000 something. Sebab saya tak ada detail tu kan uh, Jadi maknanya itu pun uh, penumbuhan bangunan ni pun banyak uh, penyihar uh, sumbangan daripada Prof. Nakib Isaf lah yeah. uh, Asal hukum tu, tu banyak kepada kita sejarah juga dan juga kepada Sebab balik pergi kepada Prof. Nakib juga Sebab apa tahu uh, beliau ni ada sambeti yang besar jasa dia untuk istek ni sebenarnya Bila penumbuhan istek dia dilakukan memang daripada mula sampai ke orang kata uh, tertubuh ni istek di Jalan Duta ni memang banyak beliau memegang peranan lah. Okey, uh, actually kan bagi istri ni pendapat apa ni pesenggal saya sendiri lah sebab saya tak tahu orang lain orang luar kan. Tapi kalau dari segi saya punya pandangan sendiri tu actually memang banyak tarikan pada istek ni sebenarnya sebab apa? Ke, keunikan istek tu istek bukan setakat dari segi bangunan saja, bukan dari segi koleksi saja. Kalau kita tengok dia memang satu-satunya yang saya tengoklah bangunan-bangunan kes memang ada tu kan dari segi arkitektur tu yang ada orang cakap macam uh, dia punya main macam Alhamdra pun ada and then kadang-kadang bila saya tengok kan ada juga kadang-kadang student saja datang ke istek ni hanya nak tengok arkitektur kita sebab dia kata something yang very unique lah eh. lepas kalau kita tengok pun ada cakap macam kasa bangunan ni of course kalau dari segi collection tu memang saya kata kadang-kadang bahan kita ni memang one and the only one yang ada satu dunia okay, dalam. jadi kadang-kadang bila proses kita, kita tengok keunikan bahan-bahan apa semua tu itu yang kita cuba apa ni uh, tonjolkan dari segi kelebihan istek compared to uh, tempat-tempat lain lah and then kadang-kadang bahan tu apa yang saya maksudkan you tak mudah nak dapat di tempat lain Cuma sekarang ni apa yang kita nak cuba buat sekarang kita nak nak publicise kan apa yang kita ada supaya uh, istek lebih dikenali dikenali dan boleh di apa orang kata dikongsi maklumat kita sama dengan dengan apa ni public apa ni lah orang luar kan nah, itu kita punya main uh, apa ni uh, proses untuk revive balik apa ni istek kita sekarang istek kan dari segi pembelian artifak tu something yang agak sukar saya nak jelaskan sebab apa uh, proses pembelian macam saya cakap tadi lah proses pembelian uh, bahan-bahan termasuklah sama ada manuskrip rare book dan juga artifak ni di, banyak di, uh, dilakukan semasa pentadbiran Prof. apa ni Syed Muhammad Nakib dulu jadi bila kita ambil alih itu kebanyakan bahan-bahan dah sedia ada dalam koleksi kita 
tamadun Melayu merujuk kepada sekelompok golongan manusia yang dikenali sebagai orang Melayu yang berdiami di kawasan Kepulauan Nusantara, Kepulauan Melayu Indonesia, Alam Melayu dan juga Tanah Jawi. Orang Melayu bertebaran di seluruh dunia yang di mana kita boleh dapati dijumpai di Kepulauan Madagaskar dan juga di Afrika yang kita kenali sebagai Melayu Diaspora. Tamadun Melayu mudah dikenal pasti melalui dua aspek. Yang pertama adalah bahasa Melayu iaitu orang Melayu menggunakan bahasa Melayu sebagai bahasa perantaraan dan juga agama Islam iaitu agama dan adab adat yang dianuti oleh orang Melayu. Namun kini, tarifan Melayu telah berubah di mana merujuk kepada Perkara 160 Perlembagaan Persekutuan Malaysia Melayu ditarifkan sebagai orang yang menganuti agama Islam, bercakap bahasa Melayu dan juga mengamalkan adat-adat Melayu. Objektif kami pada hari ini yang pertama adalah untuk mengetahui impak kedatangan Islam kepada tamadun Melayu itu sendiri. Islam um, is what we call the world religion, which means that um, it is a religion um, just like Christianity, which has spread throughout the world to different ethnic groups, different uh, nationalities, uh, different classes of people um, across different civilizations, and when when it does so, it um, um, brings certain um, timeless characteristics of the religion to these people, certain unchanging beliefs, you know, unchanging beliefs uh, 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 by, by which I mean the, the, um, the pillars uh, or the, the um, what we call the, the rukun of Islam. So these, regardless of whether it is the Malays or the Persians or the Turks or the Tamils, whoever becomes Muslims, they take the same beliefs. But at the same time, the the the, the new religion, um, when Islam first came to the Malays, um, it um, accommodated itself in terms of its cultural expression to the culture of the, of the Malays. Among the Arabs, uh, when the Arabs first became Muslims, Islam also accommodated itself to the cultural expression of the, of the Arabs. Um, and you can see this in many aspects of, uh, of life. Um, if you look at food, you look at um, architecture, you look at dress, um, you look at uh, music, you look at the various arts, um, you will find that uh, the Malays have uh, distinctive uh, their distinctive uh, cultural expressions, which um, take on uh, an Islamic form after they became Islamized. So, for example, um, the Malays who used to um, uh, to uh, practice uh, various art forms, for example, the Ramayana, right, which is derived from uh, from Hindu. Culture. Um, after the coming of Islam, uh, that uh, practice did not cease, but the, the Ramayana itself, uh, in a sense, became Islamized because it, it took on Islamic uh, elements in terms of the themes, the values expressed, the characters even, um, and the same can be said of the various, uh, you know, um, Malay dance forms and you know, art forms. Um, this you find all over the world, where Islam goes, uh, it brings uh, certain timeless teachings which do not change over time and do not change depending on, on the, 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 the geography or the culture. But at the same time, uh, there is an emerging with uh, the, the local uh, tradition. So for example, you find that the Malay language doesn't, uh, it, it changes to some extent in terms of the um, vocabulary uh, because the, you know, the, the, the thinking of the Muslims about the Malays changed uh, in terms of their conception of God and their conception of um, their nature, their conception of their relations with um, uh, fellow Muslims and um, fellow human beings. All that would change with the new religion. Um, 
um, some of that change is reflected in the in the language. Um, so you have in, in, in that case some um, uh, pre-Islamic Malay words um, would have been replaced with uh, Islamic with Arabic terms, right? Uh, to reflect the, the 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 changes in the, the world view of the Malays. Um, but um, you, at the same time, you find that many Malay words uh, remain, uh, pre-Islamic Malay words remain there, right? mm -hmm. but they, they, are, they remain as part of the aesthetics of uh, the Malay language. So words that are associated with um, pre-Islamic religions, for example, words like Chahaya, words like uh, Sambayang, uh, words like um, agama itself, the word mm -hmm. agama itself. These, these are all, uh, <coughs> in the case of Chaya, in the case of agama, these are words that come from Sanskrit. Rasa, feeling, comes from Sanskrit uh, and is related to the Hindu tradition. Well, after the Malays become Islamized, they retain these words, but they don't have those Hindu connotations uh, anymore. Even if the Malays say Sambaya, but mm -hmm. of course, um, they mean Salat by, by Sumaya. That's what they mean. And Malays have been using Sumaya for, for centuries. It's only very recent. Objektif kami kedua pada hari ini adalah untuk mengetahui pandangan semesta orang Melayu selepas kedatangan Islam. You know, when you, when you speak about um, the, the world view of uh, of the, the Muslims, um, of course, there is there is a um, a world view of Muslims that we can identify that is common to all Muslims. Uh, all Muslims have a, a certain view of uh, of the nature of, uh, of Allah, the nature of God. All, all, regardless of the culture you belong to, all Muslims have a certain view of what their uh, their relations should be with with God, um, uh, which is formalized in the uh, in the form of uh, theology of Imam uh, Kalam. Um, all Muslims have a um, similar view about um, the sources of knowledge in, in, uh, in Islam. Uh, you know, the, being the revelation, the Quran, the authority of the prophets. Uh, sense perception, akal, uh, uh, and, and uh, in, uh, ilham. So these are the very, these are the, the sources of knowledge, uh, the, the sabab of knowledge, as Muslims say. And all Muslims have the same notion, regardless of whether they are Malay or Turk or Iranian or Arab. Um, um, so there are aspects of the of, of the worldview which are, are common, but then. Um, there are also aspects of uh, people's understanding of uh, reality, understanding of um, their culture, of their society, of their history, which um, are conditioned by the time and the period and by the culture that they live in. Uh, for example, the, the way uh, a Muslim thinks um, in a uh, desert society is very different from the way a Muslim thinks uh, in uh, a feudal empire. So for example, if you look at um, uh, the Malay world uh, in the 16th century, when they were looking, when they were living in uh, feudal type empires, um, um, one uh, perspective among the Malays, uh, you, in fact you have two perspectives among the Malays, one which is influenced by Islam and one which is influenced more by the feudal tradition. Um, the idea of subservience to the ruler, the idea that the ruler is above the law, the idea that one has to be obedient to a ruler even if the, 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 the ruler is unjust. These are feudal ideas. Mm -hmm. So there is a feudal worldview. Uh, and some Malays, even if they were Muslims, were dominated by the feudal worldview. Um, but there were also Muslims uh, in, the, in the 16th century in the Malay world who were more influenced by an Islamic worldview. 
which was more egalitarian, it was not feudalistic. Uh, it believed that the, the ruler, the sultan, should be below the law, not above the law, and that um, uh, the, the ruler has an obligation to follow the teachings of Islam and to serve the people and so on and so forth. Um, so, you, in this case, you may have a clash of worldviews. In this case, between. Objektif kami yang ketiga pada hari ini adalah untuk mengetahui pencapaian tamadun Melayu selepas kedatangan Islam dalam SPSP yang tertentu. Uh, prior to the coming of Islam, although there was some influence of, of what is now called uh, Hinduism and Buddhism, um, basically they they were not uh, deeply influenced by those religions because those those uh, there was no high tradition of uh, Hinduism and Buddhism in uh, among the Malays, uh, unlike the, the Japanese. But you, you find in Java, for example, you find monuments built by the, uh, by the Japanese and the Buddhist uh, monuments. You find traces of uh, Hindu learning, and Buddhist learning, and so on. Um, and that's not the case with, uh, with, with the Malays. Um, there was some influence of Hindu Buddhist ideas and uh, also animism, and shamanism, and so on. Um, so they were not a high civilization, uh, generally speaking. Um, but with the coming of Islam, the, the, the Malays um, uh, became uh, Muslim, not in a superficial sense, but in, uh, in, in the sense that they internalized the, the world of Islam. They, uh, they internalized um, the, the rational uh, worldview, the rational aspects, for example, the stress on, uh, on akal uh, as a form of, uh, as a source of uh, knowledge, um, but also the stress on uh, um, sensation, you know, the, the role of the, of the five senses in the acquisition of knowledge uh, and, and all the other sources of knowledge. Um, so this gradually led to the Malays seriously cultivating uh, the sciences. Um, although in the case of the Malays, unlike let's say the Arabs, um, more so unlike the Persians, um, uh, and to some extent the Arabs who not only cultivated philosophy and theology but also uh, the physical sciences, uh, uh, mathematical sciences uh, and even developed uh, technology to some extent. Um, I think uh, because of the later stage of Islamization, because of uh, the fact that Islam, Islam came relatively later to this part of the world, um, there wasn't sufficient time for uh, the development of uh, uh, many sciences among the, the Malays. So, by the 16th century, there was already development in uh, Malay uh, Islamic philosophy and, and theology, um, and to some extent, um, some other uh, sciences to do with uh, healing, medicine, traditional, what we call now traditional uh, medicine. Uh, there was some development in architecture um, where in certain um, uh, uh, motives uh, and ideas uh, from Islamic heritage were combined with uh, the, the local uh, traditions. Um, uh, and there was some influence in the crafts, in the arts and crafts. Uh, for example, with the coming of Islam, with the coming of uh, the Arabic script and the development of Jawi, you have the development of uh, uh, calligraphy, right? Yeah. Um, but uh, because Islam came relatively later to the Malay world as compared to uh, the, the coming of Islam to Iran or to Turkey or to the Central Asians, um, there was lesser time before the colonial period for you know the arts and the sciences and the crafts to uh, to, to develop. That some of that development was was halted um, during the colonial period. Masa untuk refleksi kajian kami untuk kesimpulannya.
kami mendapati bahawa terdapat banyak sekali impak kedatangan Islam kepada tamadun Melayu. Antaranya ialah daripada segi kebudayaan, kepercayaan, cara hidup serta fungsi istana. Selain itu, kita juga dapat mengetahui tentang pandangan semesta Melayu selepas kedatangan Islam. Antaranya ialah seperti uh, penggunaan keris dan silat. Kita juga dapat mengetahui tentang pencapaian tamadun Melayu selepas kedatangan Islam. Contohnya ialah persuratan Melayu seperti sastra, seni bina serta sains dan teknologi. Melalui lawatan ini, kami berharap agar kajian kami terhadap Ustaz ini dapat mendedahkan lagi tentang uh, tempat ini sebagai pusat diujukan ilmiah untuk masyarakat. Maka benarlah kata Hang Tuah itu, tak Melayu hilang dirinya. Saya Anis Aniza. Saya Mahafiz untuk Gembara Nusantara. Hai, nama saya Umar Fiza Zakaria. Hai, nama saya Fatih Fatini. Hai, nama saya Nur Sabina. Hai, saya Nikmah Mushaki bin Muhammad Yashin. Hai, saya Nurdian Abdi Akub. Hai, nama saya Umar Maimai bin Muhammad Yashin. Hai, saya Nur Sabina bin Tamu Akba. Hai, nama saya Nur Hazza bin Sabina. Hai, saya Anis Aminza bin Yerostan. Hai, saya Badru Amin. <laughs>